When one chapter of your life is over, it is up to you to write the next. So celebrate your hopes and celebrate your dreams, as the most exciting memories in life are the ones we are yet to make. First of all, I would like to thank my incredible music team down below for producing the soundtrack for that, and the, amaz and the amazing production team here at TED for helping me put this together. <laughs> my name is Stefan Zubic, and I'm an 18-year-old aspiring creative director. And now you may ask, how do I decide to make a show like this? How does that come to be? Well, when I was a kid, I loved fireworks. Fireworks were the most amazing thing in my life. I would go watch the celebration of light and then come home and recreate the fireworks using my hands as explosions. Well, when I got older, that stopped. But I found a new interest, theme parks, specifically Disney theme parks. And why Disney, you may ask? Well, because their stories and their magic are by far the best spectacles in the world. And there, a dream started. I took my passion for shows and I took my passion for theme parks and combined it together into a dream I have now. I want to work for Walt Disney Imagineering Creative Entertainment. They're the design firm that designs all the light shows and parades and nighttime spectaculars for the theme parks of Disney around the world. This is a really hard goal, in my opinion. Some may say it's almost impossible, but what I found is that by creating these shows and working towards that goal, it is kind of fun to do impossible things. Now, I didn't just want to say I'm going to become an Imagineer. I wanted to work towards actually doing it. So I decided to create my own show at the age of 14. This here is World of Color at Disney's California Adventure at the Disneyland Resort. It is an amazing water show that uses thousands of illuminated water fountains to tell stories through light and color and water. I wanted to create my own World of Color, my own miniature water show. So I had this idea, this concept. But then I realized one thing. The bridge from concept to reality is very difficult, and there are many, many challenges along the way. First of all, I had no experience with any type of technology, entertainment, light, or anything in general. I was 14 years old, basically just having a dream and a goal. So I decided to do research. In fact, I did countless hours of research, trying to figure out how to make this spectacle possible. Eventually, I did succeed, though it was difficult. But as soon as that challenge was over with, I realized I had an even bigger problem. How was I going to pay for this? How was I going to pay a 14-year-old kid to pay for an almost $3,000 water fountain? So I decided to improvise. Basically, what I did was I sent out thousands of sponsorship letters, well, not thousands, but a lot of sponsorship letters outlining who I am what is my project and why I want to do it. This was difficult, and it took a lot of attempts to actually get people to support the project. But luckily enough for me, several companies did reply, and they did support it. This was great. However, there was also more challenges after that. Now that you have a plan, you have an idea of how you want to do something, it is incredibly stressful and incredibly difficult when something goes astray, when an idea you have doesn't go right. And that's what happened with my water show. Fountains went missing, lights went missing, even I broke a few lights on my own. And then I realized to myself that the last three months of my life were incredibly stressful, and I had no idea how was I going to do this. But it persisted. I was stressed to the very last moment and until the very last water fountain shot up in that show. But at the end, it was really worth it, because I realized that after through all of this stress, after through all this difficulty, I managed to succeed in creating one of my goals. My second project, BC Place. As a lighting designer, I love BC Place. I love walking by it and seeing the lights. 
And one day I thought to myself, I want to create a display. I was like, okay, sure, let's try this. So I created a proposal, and I emailed it to BC Play Stadium, and they rejected me, <laughs> which was okay at first. I wasn't really expecting it to work out, and I'm generally persistent, so I tried again a few weeks later, and they rejected me again. <laughs> and this was difficult, because I really started to question myself as a creative. This is a great building with an amazing display, and they're telling me my idea is not good enough. So I gave up on the project, and a few months went by. Then one day, I was biking around False Creek, and I looked up in the stadium, and I thought to myself, every time I see that stadium, every time I see those lights, I'm gonna remember that moment and that goal I had that didn't work out. So I got off my bike, I pulled out my smartphone, and I typed another proposal to BC Place, and I sent it to them. Luckily, this time, they did actually accept. I got to work with EOS Light Media to design the Halloween jack-o'-lantern display on the stadium that's been showing Halloween week these last two years. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. There's a great quote by one of my idols, Randy Posh, that reads, the brick walls in life are there for a reason. The brick walls are not there to keep us out. The brick walls are there to make us show how badly we want something. And I found that to be incredibly true with this project. Even though I got rejected several times, it was my, I believe that it was my persistence and my willingness to keep going that allowed me to secure this deal. Anyways, for my final project, I wanted to create a lighting display on the side of my high school. This lighting display was to feature about 144 LED lights built onto the side of the structure that go in a vertical fashion. It sounds crazy, and it was to me, but I wanted to try. I wanted to see if I could actually create something like this, even though I had no idea that it was gonna work. I had, it was what I called a long shot project, because I believed it was a long shot. But I did it. I drew the concept art, I wrote the proposal, and I pitched it to my principal, who actually agreed to do it. I was like, great, now I have to do something that I didn't even believe I was capable of doing. <laughs> so I, I went along with it. This is, the, this is the concept art here. As you can see, the LED lights are on the side of the school. So I worked on the project. It was difficult to design, not to say the least, and as with the water show in BC Place, it had its challenges and it had its setbacks. Especially this one had a lot of difficulty with funding. I had to send over 60 proposals to get the funding secured. But luckily, the project did work out and I managed to secure the completion of it and will be premiering in King George Secondary School in downtown in Vancouver in the next few months. <laughs> Thank you for that. And the lesson learned from this project was, don't be intimidated by scale. Even though something seems big, something seems out of reach, that doesn't mean you can't do it. Sure, you might have to work more, but that doesn't mean you should limit your own abilities and your own scale. So my journey to Disney continues, and I do believe it's gonna be a long road until I'm working for creative entertainment. But I learned many lessons along the way. First of which, work on overcoming your challenges. Be persistent, and lastly, aim big. It is wonderful when you work on a project and it succeeds. Now, not to say the least, the path from concept to reality is incredibly stressful. This last show, I can tell you now, everything that could possibly go wrong with it went wrong 10 minutes before I was about to go on. So there's constant stress with everything. But I realized something, at the very end of all of my projects, after all the, the stress and everything is complete, Walt Disney was right. It is kind of fun to do the impossible. Thank you.